me jump directly and to introduce myself to the attendees. First of all, welcome everyone. Welcome to today's uh, session to a new webinar with Socradar. My name is Shema. I'm the channel marketing specialist and uh, I will be your moderator for today's session with uh, along with my colleague Habib that he will be our speaker. Um, in today's session where we will be talking about mastering incident response uh, as a Socradar approach, leveraging threat intelligence for effective incident handling. Um, I believe we can go ahead and we can start. The floor is yours, Habib. Please introduce yourself and feel free to jump in. Sure, thank you so much for your kind introductions. So let me introduce myself. <clears throat> this is Habib. Uh, I'm working as a customer success manager in Socradar, and I'm responsible for Europe and Middle East region especially. And uh, today, as Shema said, we are talking about uh, some uh, important uh, things when you are pre preparing your incident response plan. Yeah, and uh, I think we can start if you want, Shema, or we can wait another one minute sure. maybe. Sure, I believe we can start. Feel free to share your screen and go ahead. I believe okay. they will, the people, they are already joining us. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, welcome, everyone, first of all. So let me share my screen just a minute, please. Sure, take your time. In the meantime, I was a bit curious for our attendees in today's session. Um, could you please tell us where are you from, from where are you joining us? Just out of curiosity, for example, me and Habib, uh, we are based in Istanbul, from Istanbul, Turkey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shema, can you please uh, correct me if you can see the presentation? The correct yes. Presentation? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. So if everybody is ready, I am starting. Okay. So Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So as I said, we will talk about today uh, the very important topics in in cybersecurity life, which is incident responding, right? So why incident responding is important because uh, as a cybersecurity professional, like I am working more than six years, like uh, it is in seven years. So I saw that whatever you are doing, it is not enough because every time the incident can be happen to your organization. So we have to prepare very good incident responsing plan. And today I will also explain, actually my main point will be how you are using Socredar when you are using your incident responding. So in which steps in, in, the, in your plan, in which step you need to implement the Socredar so you can easily uh, take an actions about this uh, problems. So, uh, when we look at the, as I said in the in the cybersecurity life, as I said, uh, there is no such things that we can say we are one hundred percent we are secure. And when we look at the uh, uh, you know numbers, it is very predictable. In the next year, the number of the cybersecurity uh, breach is happening and gives some damage to the companies will be like more than ten thousand uh, ten billion dollars. So you imagine the, the number of the, this money. And if anyone is give this money to me, I can do everything, right? And you can also do everything with this money. There's too, this is too much money. And even if we are talking about different solutions, different cybersecurity solutions, still this is a this is a money that every uh, every professional thinks it is comes with the uh, with their you know with their pockets. So when we look at the reason of the, this cyber threats, we are seeing that this is uh, mostly becoming like from ransomware attacks for phishing attacks or, or DDoS attacks. And when we look at the, the tools that attackers are using at this moment, we are seeing attackers using some stealer logs, which is credentials belongs to you. Or it is becoming because you are using like other parties, even your cybersecurity tools you are using. And I will also give some a good examples uh, about that. So you will see that how your vendors is becoming actually your weak points when the attackers attack you, right? So uh, this proactive approach is very important in cybersecurity. So let's move to do the other uh, slide, which 
we can see this some incident responding planning. So when we look at incident responding, and I believe that you have also some similar incident responding planning, and it is exactly like uh, consisting of in seven steps, right? In the preparation you are doing before the attack is happening, you prepare your environment, like you are implementing some tools, or et cetera. And uh, the other steps coming, coming uh, like that, detections, continent, etc. So by knowing them, you can use SOC radar in each steps when you take a specific attacks. So to understand how we can use SOC radar in the, step, in the steps, let's look at the, what SOC radar is offering you as a main modulus. When you look at the SOC radar key features, you will see that it starts with the attack surface management. So attack surface management is very important because uh, when we look at the digital currency is increasing, AI using of AI is increasing, it means that your attack surface also is increasing. So you have to know what is your attack surface management, right? So you can easily take an actions if something is happening. Uh, the, the second section, the second module is brand protection. So let's say I am a creating an impersonating web page or impersonating um, an account in social media. How do you know that? Just think about it. There is any key, any, any platforms that you are using in, in your insider. Do you know how you detect them? So this is very important knowing them because if you don't for such impersonating accounts, you cannot take actions and uh, believe me, your customer is affecting a lot about that. When we are also look at the numbers, we saw that if any organization is has some leakage point in the cybersecurity perspective, their customers uh, intend to uh, use another products and a similar products, especially it is happening in the financial sectors, right? So if at a, at a bank or a financial sectors company uh, has some uh, taking too much cybersecurity attacks, and if there's too many breach happening on their side, so customers uh, intent, as I said, going to another bank, another financial sector. So you need to know that. The other one is dark web monitoring. So when you uh, face an incident, let's say there is a ransomware group putting a keylogger to your computer, and they want some money from you, and the first questions must be come to your minds that which information is leaked, right? So you need to know that. Then you can decide it to take the, uh, another action. So without knowing the, which information is leaked, you cannot do anything. So this is very important. Uh, what is uh, in dark web, in deep web, et cetera, in this or in telegram, doesn't matter, in this channel, what is, uh, which file is exist related with your company or related to you, right? So we need, we have to know this one. And the other one, the other modulus will be cyber threat intelligence module. So when we look at the, the uh, incident responding planning, the second and third steps is consisting of the, after you understand the problem, you need to understand, you need to verify who is doing this attack, right? So cyber threat intelligence module is giving you exactly this information by just giving ask the hash information, IP, IP address information, or any information you are seeing in your organizations. By using this module, you can easily address them, right? And the last one is the supply chain intelligence. And in my opinion, it is the uh, most important module at this time, because when we look at the uh, cyber attacks, it is now coming from the third party vendors. Even the cybersecurity tools, cybersecurity products using. So I will also give you some concrete example and how we can use in this section. So first of all, let's start with the ASM. And before uh, going forward in the ASM side, let me, let me tell you a very big um, actual vulnerability in our cybersecurity lab, which is Log4G, right? And when we look at Log4G, it is very critical vulnerabilities and discovered in, in the Apache uh, product and uh, more than 100 millions of devices affecting from the, this, uh, this vulnerability, right? Even Amazon product, Apple product, every product you are using is affecting from the, this vulnerability. So let's say it is happening again for another product. It is applicable, right? Like again, uh, 100 millions of devices affecting another vulnerability. So what should you do? 
just remember in the log 4G, what, what did you do when you see the, when you saw the log 4G? The first things that you, you try to understand which product I am using is containing the log 4G, right? And what we saw, we didn't know this information and we, we quickly check it, which product is using log 4G. We asked the vendors, we asked our SIEM solutions are like our XCR, XCR providers and I, we asked them, our firewall guys, we asked them in, in this product, we are using log 4G or not? Then we try to take actions about them, but it takes too many times, right? And in the cybersecurity, sometimes minutes is very important. Not the hours, not the days, and minutes is very important. So in this model, I think there is some uh, participant is also using Socredar. Uh, it is also very neat features in the Socredar. We will call them attack uh, surface threat assessment. We'll give you, make a quick scan in your internal about the these vulnerabilities. Repeat again, let's say this happening. You log 4G, it just happening and we identify them. This is a log 4G. Because we know and we show them before the attack is happening, which technologies you are using in your assets. Then we are also showing the related asset related that using the log 4G. And when you click the scan uh, for this, uh, vulnerability on the asset, you will see that if this vulnerable or not. So you can easily know that in your external asset, of course, which product using uh, this vulnerability is happening, okay? And you can easily scan them. So you will stay in the safe side. And again, when you look at the incident responding planning in the second steps, making like a detections, uh, in the detection steps, you will know the which one is uh, affecting from this vulnerability. And in the third and fourth steps, you can easily right, uh, understand the problem and solve the problem. Without going to like a remediation steps, you will just solve the problem because incident will not happening. You just block the incident, right? So this will be very good features that if you use it, you can easily take an actions about such vulnerabilities will uh, that affect your organization. So the other one will be like brand protection. So when we look at the why brand protection is important, again, let's look at the, the uh, a scenario which is happening to the PayPal. So in, in like one uh, last year, I think in the PayPal, the attackers creating too many different fake website, which is like uh, PayPal, they put uh, 2A or they put 2P stuff like that. And they sent this to the uh, users uh, who is who using the PayPal, right? Then people don't doesn't understand if this uh, original website or not. Then they uh, they put some information on them, and attackers by using this information stole their money. So it is like a too many different customers affecting from them, and millions of dollars is losing in these attacks. So if these things happen to the PayPal, believe me, it is also possible to. Uh, coming to your ads, coming to your organization. So for in the first step, you have to be uh, aware of the if impersonating domain, if registering in any places, you need to know. Like if anyone is uh, using such a uh, name, which uh, trying to uh, put uh, uh, like a similar name with you, you need to, you need to solve that. Because when you uh, know for such uh, things is happening, such things exist in the social media, in the web, in any places. So you can again take an actions by using take down. Again, let's come back to the uh, incident responding. You detect the problem in the second step and third step, what should you do? You need to take actions about them, right? And action is already in there. You you just click the take down process. That's all. Now, uh, our tech down team will work to take down and remove this page from the internet. And you will be sure that no one can using this uh, website anymore or no one can reach to the, this website. So uh, this is also very good features and very important things that you need to use in your companies to be sure that nobody using your name or nobody using your company information with the, such attack uh, scenario, right? Also, on the brand protection, 
we have detected that such different things. So for example, rock mobile application, what we are seeing, especially for the Google markets, who is using like a Android uh, phones, as you know, they can easily implement any APK file their phone, right? But what we are seeing also, attackers using some uh, ransomware file or some malicious file, putting the original uh, mobile applications and uh, customers without knowing this one, they just download to their phone. Then what's happening? Uh, believe me, they just get attacked and they uh, blame you about that. And they come to your organization and they are telling you that because of you, I get attacked. But you know, uh, this is not related to you. But still, we need to protect your company and we need to protect your uh, customers, right? So if you protect our customers, our reputation will increase. So again, just come back uh, to the incident responding plan. When we look at the, the, uh, the last step, it will be like lesson learned in the incident plan, right? So without coming to these steps, we need to understand and we need to remove such files from the internet because this is a very uh, good, like a, a lesson learned from the internet from the time being, uh, we need to remove such files. And also, uh, this is a good features on the circuit because I told you that attacks is coming, mostly is coming from the DDoS, right? And DDoS is another, uh, like a hard, uh, attacks that organizations may be uh, to you, any threat actors may be uh, trying to uh, make such attacks to you. It is not too hard in DDoS attacks, but still you need to be aware of if such attacks is detected in which IP blocks that you are affecting from them, because maybe you are located in different region, maybe you're located in one region, doesn't matter. If any of your IP block is under DDoS attacks, you need to understand these IP blocks and you can easily block them in your firewall. Again, let's come back to the incident responding. You detect the problem and you know the, how to take actions about them because it is already uh, in your hands. So this is about the brand protections and let's move to the dark web monitoring. So uh, as you know, Yahoo. Yahoo is a very big company. Is uh, in, in time being, they're also competitor with the Google. And there is a, some leakage happen in their side and 3 billion accounts, it's just exposed, right? And Yahoo affected from that and Yahoo customers affected from that. And not only Yahoo, also Facebook, LinkedIn and River City Media for such companies had such leakage is happening in their company and millions of data is leaked out. So let's say now you understand that there is a ransomware attack happened to your companies and you need to understand which information leaked out, right? So for such things, you need to check all dark web, breach forums, hacker forums, uh, telegram channels uh, you, you, to see which data is there, but it is not possible, right? Checking everywhere. But by using circular dark web monitoring tools, you can easily understand which information is there. And our module is working like in every six hour in every day in, in different jobs is working. But at most one day later, you will see that in which forum or in which places your information is leaked. Even if it is sale on dark, dark markets, doesn't matter. You're in the black market, doesn't matter. You can see that. OK, so you can easily understand what is the level of this breach and what should you do. So for such things, we need to understand if our company related information detected on a hacker forum or employee credential detected for such things is exist on hacker forum, telegram forum, dark web forum, doesn't matter. We need to take a quick actions and we need to understand uh, the data, then we can take the actions. So uh, this is, as I said, will be very important again in the, in, the, in the incident responding planning, because when we look at the incident responding planning, we saw that what is the border of this attack? What is the border of this breach? And by just using the dark web monitoring, you, we can easily address that, right? So uh, the other module will be help you a lot, the threat intelligence module. Because uh, when we see an attack is happening in USA, the name of the company is uh, Colonial Pipeline, they get a ransomware attack. And even FBI work with these guys to uh, protect and to uh, 
to take the uh, to remove the, the ransomware from the, the comp the, the, their system, even uh, working with them, as I said, with the FBI, they have to pay like uh, four point four million dollars to the ransomware groups. Then they take the system back. So you see, if such big companies, even the FBI, is uh, in in the work, they still have to pay money for that one. So for such things, it is again happened to the our organizations, right? So what should we do? How we negotiate with the ransomware groups? What should we do? What what should we uh, do? Tell them, right? This is very uh, questioning things that we need to be uh, thinking about because. As a, as, a, as, a, as a person, I never uh, negotiate with a ransomware group or threat actor group in any place. So we need to bring this job to the professionals. And SOCADA actually is doing these jobs. And also, uh, okay, Shema, uh, ask your question. I think there's some question. Uh, you're in mute, you're on mute, Shema. Sorry to interrupt you. Just yeah, yeah let me advise a second. By by mistake, I was answering some questions. Sorry to interrupt you. Go oh, ahead. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem. Okay, let me let me continue then. So, as I said, Sokada helps you at this point that uh, you can negotiate with these ransomware groups or these threat actor groups by by yourself, and. Uh, before coming to this point, because this is an incident responding steps that after you taking incident, you need to uh, understand, the, as I said, the level of the incident and you need to take actions about them, right? And in the ransomware attacks happening, any keylogger, let's say, implemented to your computer, you have to uh, know such things. But also by knowing some information, like uh, you will see the ransomware group, threat actor group name, or etc., you need to understand who is this threat actor, what I can do to protect myself at this point. For such things, we have a threat actor intelligence module and ransomware intelligence module. You can easily see who is this threat actor in this page and what I can do for them. You can see everything that they are using at this time. Like uh, you will see the IOCs, it means the IP address, hashes, etc. that they are using in, in uh, at this time. You can see the some Yara and Sigma rule to detect uh, any attacks coming from these threat actors or these ransomware groups, etc. And also, when the attack is happening, you can easily understand the, uh, their motivation, the things that they are using, or etc. It means you will see everything about them. So again, when we look at the incident responding planning, and when we look at the last steps, the lesson learned and the other things, it will be already in the in the Sokedar platform. Because as I said, you will be every information about these threat actors and you can implement the easy little related products. For example, you are using some SIEM solutions or some XCR solutions. For XCR solutions, if you have some SHA files, uh, hash files in your hand, you can easily match these hash files uh, and write some use cases in the XTR. If any file is coming to the, my organization, including this hash, create an incident, right? Or you can tell them, uh, because we have also given like domains, like some other uh, information using some other IOCs using by these threat actors, you can easily implement it to your firewall. If any of my, use, if any of my users trying to click this uh, malicious domain, just block them. Because it is your, it will be in your blacklist. You will be easily uh, block them, right? So, it's again this cyber threat intelligence module will help you a lot uh, when you try to understand the problems because this is a very important point in the res incident response plan, right? So you can use it like that. So the the other one will be actually, as I said, uh, okay. Before that, let me also explain the vulnerability intelligence. So. I, I told you that even if you are using cybersecurity tools, you can take attack, right? So, uh, for example, uh, in the last last couple of months ago, there is an attack. Actually, there is a, some vulnerability exists on the Palo Alto products, which is global product. So, because this vulnerability is exists on there, attackers using this vulnerability and trying to 
uh, attack some of the organizations, right? So you see, you are using a product which is for your firewall pur purposes, for your VPN purposes, but still the attack is there. So you have to follow which vendors, which product that you are using in your company. And we have a, this specific subscriptions uh, in the vulnerability intelligence module. You can easily subscribe your specific products that you are using in your company. Like when you implement to the Microsoft 365, it means that whenever there is a, some vulnerability exists on this product, you will know immediately. And when you know that this information, again, incident responded. Remember in the second step, detection steps, you know the which vulnerability is there, you can easily detect them. Then you can take the, uh, the other actions before any threat actors and ransomware attacks trying to use this uh, vulnerability come to your organization. On the other hand, believe me, maybe you will know you will uh, ever you will know know that such vulnerability exists or not so you cannot take the actions about them right so this is again will be very important uh, for you uh, taking actions in your site so uh the last module that uh before the last module i want to also talk about the campaigns so we have a campaigns page which shows you uh, which campaign is running on threat actors. So let's say uh, there is a global corporation is targeting by a sophisticated phishing campaign. Let it, will, it, it may be like, a, as you can see in here, you, you, you can easily see the old uh, campaigns at this moment, but there is also another campaign maybe will work like that, will, will work for you. For example, we will attack a company which is from Europe like uh, if they are doing manufacturing activities. We are exactly seeing such campaigns. So we know this one. And in the first step, we need to prepare for these attacks, right? In the incident responding, in the first steps, we have to prepare for your for ourselves. So the questions will come arrive. Which things that I need to do to protect myself? So when you come to the campaign page, you can easily see the analysis of these attacks, what threat actors will do. And you can see the mitigation strategies, like some rules, some micro attack rules, some techniques and tactics, some procedures you will see in here. In the remediation steps, if these things happening, what should you do to remediate these things in your environment? So it will be very good information in your hand to prepare yourself for such campaigns. Because as I said, the campaign will uh, for you. So you don't know that, right? Even, even maybe this campaign will come to our side. So we have to use this module to understand the, our preparation steps. And uh, yeah, the, the last one will be supply chain intelligence. So let's remember the things happening in the SolarWinds attacks. So when we check the SolarWinds attack, we saw that the attack is happening because uh, there is a, some vulnerability exists on SolarWinds and attackers by using this uh, vulnerability who is the using the solar winds? They put some zero day attacks to their end, right? So uh, again, you are using solar winds for some purposes, but because there's a, some vulnerability and you don't know that, uh, you can you 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 are taking some attacks to your organization, right? So you have to know and you have to follow which product you are using at this moment because there will be some uh, such again such attacks happening. And in this example, the Cisco. Cisco is very good uh, example at this point because it is very new information. There is a very big breach is happening on the Cisco side and too many products are affecting from them, too many big companies are affecting from that. And if you are using ex uh, exactly this module, you will see that uh, your assessment report about the product and you can easily understand, okay, this is happening for this product. I need to also discuss this thing with the vendor, right? With the Cisco, let's say. I need to uh, fight for them. This is happening for your side. I, how I can be sure that if another vulnerabilities exist and I am not affected from that. So you can again uh, prepare your incident responding for like that. For example, let me give you a clue about that. Let's say information is leaked because of the Cisco. And if you prepare your, like your conditions if something is happening because of you, you need to uh, pay for us for that. So you can easily, uh, you can easily, whatever you're losing, you can gain again, right? So 
uh, to know such information, actually, we have to use a supply chain intelligence to get to this information. And uh, the last one will be, again, for the preparation steps, which is the integrations that we are allowing. As you can see in here, we, are, uh, we can integrate with different products like CM solutions, SOAR solutions, EDR solutions, firewall solutions, or et cetera. Every products that you are using in your site, we can, uh, I think every solutions I can say like that, uh, we can integrate it. So uh, why integration is important? Why this thing is important? Let me tell you again. So again, in the incident responding, you have to prepare yourself for any attacks coming to your site, right? But how do you know which attacks that is coming to your organization? So you have to know some IOCs, some threat feeds that using by another organization to attack another organization. They have to use some IP address, hash, domain, etc. So if you know this information, you can easily take an action about uh, in your site. How? So when you look at the threat feeds, uh, so called collections, you will see that we are giving like attackers information, uh, like IP addresses, as I said. So when you know these IP addresses using a DDoS attack, using a, a brute force attack or any attacks, you can easily use these IP addresses in your SIEM solutions and you're creating such use cases. If this IP address trying to connections with my organizations, create an incident. So your associate analysts will easily see uh, this incident. And because they know this is a harmful IP, a harmful IP, they can easily put them in the uh, in the uh, firewall in the block list. Or because you know only one IP and the attack is happening for another IP addresses, and you can easily match with them this attack with the other ones, and you can easily understand, okay. This is maybe also coming from another uh, threat actor. So I also put them in the firewall. I need to take an action about them, right? So for this one, we need to have these threat feeds in our hands. If we have these threat feeds, we can easily take actions about. So uh, Shaima, how many minutes that we have uh, left? Uh, do we have another? We have another ten minutes because I want to also show something yeah. in our platform. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think I can give you here maximum 10 minutes because we have a couple of questions that we need to, to answer before okay. the end of the session. Okay, I will quickly show what we have in the in our platform. So you can easily see the uh, these things exactly in our platform, okay? Just a minute, okay, here. Uh, can you able to see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay, super. I will quickly review what I told to you. Okay, the first one I told, when you when you see a breach or, sorry, a vulnerability exists, what should you do? You need to check all of your organization. Okay, this module will be ASTA, Attack Surface Threat Assessment Report. So let me refresh my page. So in here, you will easily see the, this vulnerability and exists. And because we have already know this product, let's say is, uh, Apache or etc. We have already known and showing you this is using another product that you are using. You can easily understand which asset including this uh, technology. So it's here. So you can easily start a scan and you can easily uh, like address if this vulnerability exists on this asset or not. So it will be double check and it will be very quick to understand this vulnerability. The second one we talk about the brand protection, right? So let's say there is a, some impersonating domain is exists in your environment. Like uh, they opening a web page, it is which is very uh, same with your name. Like in here, it is so clever. But when you look at the first, you can just read it so clever. But it is not a so clever, right? So it is totally different name. But let's say if I am a, one of your customer of the so clever, maybe I click this domain and I download some phishing contents to my computer and get hacked. I get compromised, right? So for such things, you can detect them. And by taking actions, you can start a tech down. So the tech down will start and remove from the internet. So you will be staying in the safe side. Also in the impersonating accounts, it, it may be the same things happening on the Instagram, Twitter, or such a big places. You can easily detect them and take an action about that, right? So uh, again, when you look at the incident responding planning, Preparation, detections, response, everything will already will be there related with this attack, related with this uh, things, right? And we talk about uh, dark web monitoring. 
the breach is happening. I hope it's not happening. And after breach is happening, uh, you need to understand what is the border of this breach. And when you come to here in the black market, you will easily see in here that some of the uh, information is leaked, as you can see in here. It is selling on the dark web market. And if we have to give this money to buy this data, we will do it for you. Or already obtained data. This is the data that you have to, you have to see uh, that which information is leaked. The compromised information is in there. So you have to identify them and you can you need to take and you have to worry these users change his, his or her password because their information leaked, right? Or uh, I talk about you related with the cyber threat intelligence module. So when you come to the uh, here, you can easily see the threat actors. So at this point, we are showing you target country in Turkey, but you can easily change it. And you can easily see the, who is the enemy of the Turkey. Who is the targeting the Turkey? For example, APT 29. You can easily see the, the, the threat actors and you can easily see the, every information about them in here and which other target countries they are, uh, they are making activities. You can see the IOCs. They are using these things when they're making attacks. So this is like a gold information. And you can use the Yara and Sigma rules. Why this is important? Because you can implement it. Again, remember incident responding planning. You can easily detect them. You can, if something is happening, you can easily detect them. And uh, same things for the ransomware intelligence groups. Okay, you can easily see such things. So campaigns we are talking about. So there is a, some campaigns running at this time from the different part of organization, as you can see. So when you click any of them, okay, so uh, you can make the analysis of these attacks, okay, and you can see the mitigation strategies, how you can uh, detect these ones and how you can take actions about these attacks. You can easily see from here. And the uh, last one will be supply chain intelligence, as I said. In the third party companies, we have at some companies that we are using in your company, let's say. Then I can easily see everything related with this company. I can see the what is their cybersecurity exposure level. And by knowing this information, what I can do to my site. You see, there is too many news exists for this company. Some zero day exploits, some attack information, everything. So I can take actions to my in my organization, right? All of them will be help my incident responding planning when I uh, respond, any incident is happening, right? So this is a, just a basic things that I am showing at this moment. So if you want to use the circle that if you are not using, let me share my screen again. And I want to show you our very easy QR code and you can easily scan this QR code, okay? And try to use the circle. Letter. Let me give you one moment, one minute, when you, uh, if anyone not using the circle, letter, they will not circle uh, uh, to their computers, their organizations. So by by waiting them, we can start answering questions, Shema, maybe. Sure, sure. We can keep this slide for anyone who's interested to scan the QR code. And in the meantime, let me start with my first question, which is from Athan. Um, the, and the question is, what steps do you take to take down impersonating domains? Yeah. So it is actually based on the which things is exist on the platform. For example, if it is an impersonating domain, if it is an impersonating accounts, it is changing for the types of the this domain or the types of the things that we need to take down. When let's mm -hmm. say it's an impersonating domain, most of the things that we are faced with. So our takedown team starting with the identifying the, the owner of this domain. Then uh, they identify the domain, they are starting to argue with the, the owner of the, this domain, and we are giving the evidence to them, which is stating that they are making some impersonating activities to them. So uh, the process, I think, will, in, in the impersonating domain side, it, it takes uh, yeah. at, least, at least half an hour, and at most two days, we are take down the, uh, the impersonating domains. Let's say the things is related with the accounts in the in the Facebook site, let's say. Uh, again, we are doing the same thing. We collect the information, which state that it mm -hmm. is a percentage activities they are doing. Then we are starting arguing with the 
uh, Facebook related teams and we are sending this information and they are trying to make the activities. I got you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, moving on to our uh, next questions, uh, which is uh, if you have external consultant, do you recommend uh, to, to configure their domain in supply chain? Um, if the supply chain using in, in our product or another product? Uh, they didn't mention. So if Maybe. they are using our supply chain module, yeah, mm -hmm. we can help them how to they configure some things in the platform because sometimes our customers don't want to everything about this supply chain platform. They mm -hmm. only want to tag some, if this company gets cyber attacks, they only want yeah. to get information. And the configuration is okay, though, let me tell you, it's very easy, not only for this one, they can just click the button and uh, close or uh, open. That's all. Then we will send this information to them. And also, okay. yeah, let most of these notes. If, mm -hmm. uh, if they're asking about the vulnerabilities happening on the products, yeah, we can mm -hmm. also help them on the configuration side, our support team, adding every mm -hmm. product that they are using. If they give us, we can easily mm -hmm. implement to the product so they can take the uh, this incident to their side. If, yeah, actually, again, in this question, she mentioned it about Socradar module. This is what she meant about supply yeah. chain. Yeah, yeah. 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 To clarify. Please, please reach out to us. We can help. We can help her. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for the rest of the um, attendees, please, if you have any questions, feel free please. to submit them. We still have a couple of, uh, of minutes before we finalize today's session. Uh, however, I see some of our attendees stand, uh, they raise their hand. Please, if you have any questions or anything that you would like to mention, feel free to uh, submit it through the Q&A section. And uh, again, uh, for everyone who took the time to join us from different countries and from different regions, we are pleasure to have you in today's session. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and to get in touch with Sokradar's team please feel free to scan the QR code and we will reach out to you. Yeah. 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 And uh, so far, I believe these are the questions that we have in today's session. Thank you so much, Habib, for your enlightening uh, and pleasure. amazing presentation. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I believe, and that's it. We are done for today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also want to thank every every participant who uh, you know uh, save time for us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, and uh, yeah, hope to see you in our next session.